Hi everybody, I'm Rachel from the Blockly team, and in this video I'm going to talk about Blockly's roadmap and how we're working on it in 2021. When I think about where I want Blockly to be in a few years, I have three goals. One, Blockly is easy to use. Two, Blockly is stable. And three, Blockly's developer community shares and reuses code. I'm going to start at the end of this list. Blockly's developer community shares and reuses code. Every time I open up a project that uses Blockly, I see something cool. A nicely implemented field, a useful set of blocks, a customized renderer, or a novel way to organize the workspace. I've put a few examples as GIFs on this slide. But we have strict requirements for accepting new features into Blockly. New blocks need to define generators for all five of our core languages. Releases only happen once a quarter. Everything has to be written in pure JavaScript. There's no taking advantage of frameworks like React. The list goes on. In 2020, we sidestepped this dilemma by creating a new repository named Blockly Samples and populating it with snippets of code that implement small focused features that don't have to generalize well. Each of these code snippets, called a plugin, is published to NPM as a separate package so they can be updated independently from the core library or other plugins. Developers can pick and choose which features they want to use, and you don't have to recompile Blockly to do it. A big motivation for this change was to make the requirements for contributions less strict, and to encourage contributions that are a size you can reasonably complete in about a week instead of a month or a quarter. My hope is that this repository will be a hub for developers to collaborate on code and feature ideas. Of course, all of this depends on you, our developer community. So this is an invitation and a call to action. Check out Blockly samples. Watch Sam and Maribeth's talks on plugins. Try your hand at building one yourself. Next on the list, stability. I aim to have a rock solid core library that supports a spinning mass of experimentation, the entire plugin ecosystem. The core library should be well-tested, well-documented, and modular. It should have enough developer hooks to support some truly strange features, but it must work properly with no modifications at all. Stability is a nice dream, but how do we get there from here? If you've been watching our repository in the last year, you've likely seen us laying the groundwork. First, we wrote interfaces that describe the expected properties and available methods for lots of little pieces of Blockly. Then we started using a registry to instantiate optional pieces of Blockly. We started with fields, but we've since expanded to include flyouts, toolboxes, and more. Once a piece of Blockly is described by an interface and instantiated through the registry, it becomes trivial to write and test alternate implementations and to include them at runtime and without recompiling core. The interface becomes the contract with the outside world. If your code, if your class implements it correctly, we'll handle the rest. A few of these alternate implementations are already out in public. The continuous toolbox, the strict connection checker, the list blocks with alternate mutators, and more. Over the next year, we will continue to make more parts of Blockly work in this way. Of course, designing without real use cases is both boring and error prone. To avoid that, we've been starting with commonly requested features. We ask what it would take to implement them as plugins, and then we change core to make it happen. With these changes, we hope to make it possible for you to get all of your custom behaviors without needing to reach into core to change either values or code. Updating to a new release of Blockly should be as simple as pulling down new files from GitHub or changing the version in your package.json with no painful rebases or searches for renamed private fields. In other words, we want to avoid forks. In turn, moving developers away from a forking model gives us more freedom to change or clean up code, as long as we don't change or redefine interfaces. Specifically, it means we'll be free to upgrade our entire code base to TypeScript. This update will happen in several phases. In phase one, we will move to Clojure's goog.module syntax. The big change here is invisibility. Anything not explicitly exported will be inaccessible. This is in contrast to Blockly's current state, where privacy annotations are more suggestions than rules. I plan to make that change for all of core Blockly in one go. That will probably land at the end of Q3 2021. 
moving to modules is a stepping stone on the way to TypeScript. Once we're using Goog.module, we can take advantage of existing tools for upgrading to TypeScript. I hope to make that change in early 2022, about a year from now. And of course, my goal is that you won't notice any of these changes if you're using a documented API. That brings me to goal number one. Blockly is easy to use. That means documentation in all of its many forms, code labs, examples, developer guides, and more. And it means open source documentation so that the community can decide what is important and write it down. This year, we started publishing code labs at blocklycodelabs.dev. The code lab contents are hosted on GitHub, meaning that you can edit them through pull requests or write whole new code labs. We also started to centralize all of our demos into the Blockly samples repository, rather than shoehorning them into the main repository in the demos folder. These examples generally serve two purposes, showing how to use Blockly's features and showing how to integrate Blockly with other tools and frameworks. Again, I want to emphasize that these examples can be tightly focused or tailored to really uncommon use cases. And we want you as a developer community to take some of the excellent examples and explanations that we see on the forum and formalize them into published examples so that future users can easily understand how to use Blockly. Finally, we have developer guides. This is the formal documentation hosted at developers.google.com. You can't edit this directly, but you can file bugs to ask us to post new pages or point out errors. We take those suggestions into account when we run a documentation sprint or fix it. We will continue to update this documentation as we extract interfaces and add APIs. Again, we have three goals that are guiding our work and that led to this roadmap. One, Blockly is easy to use. Two, Blockly is stable. And three, Blockly's developer community shares and reuses code. On behalf of the Blockly team, I'm excited to see what you build. I hope to see you at the upcoming developer summit. And remember that you can post your questions ahead of time for a Q&A or come to our live sessions.